All right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Education uh, Summit, EduChat series. Uh, so uh, I see that there's many of you that are in the chat room already. So as always, uh, please do comment down below in terms of which country are you from. Uh, we're very excited to have uh, teachers from all over the world, and uh, hopefully we are able to interact with you on more education uh, topics for today. So how have your week been, especially for those teachers coming from Malaysia? Uh, I guess it has been a very uh, interesting week, if I may say. Uh, a lot of teachers are, are starting to uh, uh, start, especially for those who are coming from Klang Valley, having uh, their classes um, having remotely. So do share with us on your experience as well, as well as those from uh, coming from uh, the Philippines. It has been a very interesting one month. Uh, so do share with us as well. Uh, how was your experience like uh, with the school reopening over there? Right. So uh, welcome, Jesse Cas Castellano. Right. Uh, always good to have you on board over here. So for today, uh, very interestingly, I guess a lot of you have been uh, joining in in the Education Summit. Uh, two of the speakers that will be uh, joining us shortly in a while, uh, they have actually been uh, presenting in the Education Summit uh, uh, two months ago. Uh, so they spoke about personalizing education for different learners' needs. So uh, a very quick introduction uh, in terms of their presentation. The, they spoke a lot about the different learners' type. Uh, they speak about uh, the visual, auditory, and kinesthetic uh, students, how you should cater your, your lesson plans uh, to suit different students' needs. But uh, by today, uh, we will be having a very uh, different approach uh, in terms of what we will be discussing with them. So uh, I, I guess uh, I would like to uh, invite them uh, up on stage directly from here. So uh, our, our first speaker or our first uh, sharer, her name uh, is Kwek Suyen. And also the second speaker will be Rini Russo. They are the founders of the Surin Academy. So uh, I would like to bring them up on stage over here. Hi, Su Hi. and Rini. Good evening. Hi. Good Hi, evening. Jay. Good evening to you. How, how has uh, your week been? Manic. <laughs> <laughs> We've just started our online school um, because the circumstances have been such. We're in an area of the, the country where schools have been shut. So, wow. um, yeah, it's been very hectic. How are you, Jay? Right. Uh, good over here but a very interesting week as well uh we have been engaging with a lot of teachers uh sharing with us in terms of uh different experiences uh, i think many of them will be having a lot of uh dialogue with us today in terms of remote learning especially uh, knowing that uh, in malaysia this is the second time around that we are going back into uh, remote learning especially for the clang valley so uh some teachers say that uh, they have learned a lot from the first uh, wave, uh, the first experience, uh, hopefully we, we can have uh, uh, probably uh, some, some discussion in terms of uh, what have we learned and how we can uh, bring forth uh, for more advancement in future. Yeah, right. Definitely, uh, yes. Yeah, so um, so for, for today, I guess, uh, be, before we start, uh, by the way, uh, Rini, I, I just want, want to find out, uh, my, my team actually told me that you actually speak five languages, is, is that true? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> how did you find out? <laughs> Yes, okay. I do. I, I'm actually a linguist. I love languages. Um, growing up, maybe because of my um, mixed background, um, being a third culture kid myself, me meaning that, you know, you grow up in another country, but and your parents are both from different nationalities. So languages is something I've always been passionate about. In my free time, I'd love to learn Korean, Arabic, <laughs> Mandarin, but Mandarin's really hard for me. But yes, I do. I do love languages. I love communicating with people. Um, yeah. Right. Right. And and by the way, just out of curiosity, what five languages do you do you actually oh, speak? Um, um, I speak English, of course, uh, Malay, Indonesian, which is similar, French, and Italian. Wow, French and Italian. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm of Italian nationality, but I'm a resident here in Malaysia. I've lived here all my life, and I was born here. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So, so uh, I, I guess probably we can have some form of conversation uh, in in the other language as well. Surely, in a while. Italian, certo. Vuoi parlare in italiano? Possiamo. Wow. Right. Uh, uh, I, I got an idea. I'm, I'm just laughing along. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, Indonesian and uh, Malay are quite similar, so it's just a few words that are different. But um, I'm I, I just love languages. I think that was actually when I was growing up, I wanted to work for the UN as an interpreter. You know, and you know how ambitions change as you get older and older. So yeah, that didn't happen, but I ended up being a teacher and mm -hmm. I love teaching languages. Yeah. Okay. And and as for Sue as well, I, I guess you and Rini, um, uh, as we mentioned that no, you're the founders of... Yeah, uh, but I'm yeah. the opposite. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I speak one language several very badly and have trying to learn Korean and had um, how many teachers run away? Yes. <laughs> Yes, I'm still trying to find her another teacher. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it depends on the person, right? We're all different, we're all unique, and we all like different things. Some people pick up languages easier than others. Yeah, some some just find it really difficult. It's, it's the norm. I had a lot of um, British colleagues as well mm. who learned French as a second language and said they couldn't remember a word of French after school, so... Right. It's it's not for everyone. And the beauty yeah. about Malaysia as well is that it's a multiracial country and you hear so many languages. So growing up here, you're used to so many different languages, which we're really blessed to have because in other countries, you just hear one language the whole time. So the children here in Malaysia are very multilingual, very, right. very multilingual. Right, right. I, I guess we, we can speak a lot about uh, language as well as immersive learning in terms of language. How how if you're in another country, you, you tend to speak more of that language and yeah. you, you master it in a, in a short it's, amount of time, rather than having to It's the survival of the fittest, right? It's yeah. your survival skills because you have to communicate, so you're forced to pick up the language. I'm sure if we threw Sue into Korea for mm, exactly. without any help, with just by herself with a backpack, she'll pick up Korean in well, two weeks. I don't know. They say that you <laughs> meant to learn it fast in pillow talk, right? It doesn't work. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> So <laughs> it depends on the situation because, you know, if, if you're surrounded by everyone who speaks English, you don't find the need to practice the language that you're learning. Um, right. You know, and if you don't practice it, it's very difficult to, to pick up a language. So right. you have to be immersed uh, to pick it up. And I think um, there's a lot of um, uh, immersion here in Malaysia as well because of the bilingualness in national schools, how they there's Tamil schools, Mandarin schools, you know, uh, Malay schools, and then there, there's the English international schools as well. So the children all uh, come from different backgrounds, but one thing for sure, they're all very multilingual. So mm -hmm. it's very normal to have at least two languages, right, Sue? Yeah. <laughs> yes. right. I guess we already have a, a question over here from Tina. Uh, uh, Tina is uh -huh. one of the teachers from Jakarta as well. Uh, she actually teaches uh, English uh, and, and I guess public speaking as well. So I guess we can have more of the discussion in terms of uh, language, as a, especially for second language uh, uh, countries, right? Uh, so uh, more, more on that shortly in a while, Tina. Uh, glad you can join us again, Tina. So uh, yeah, so, so I guess uh, Rini and Sue, uh, let's, let's start with uh, Surin Academy, uh, I guess, as a start uh, for those uh, who, who have not heard uh, your, your main introduction from Education Summit. Uh, would you be able to, uh, in a very short uh, manner, describe uh, uh, Surin Academy as well as the institution, what's different about it uh, as of uh, public schools in Malaysia? Okay, well, we're different because we're very small. Um, we focus a lot on personalized learning um, the inspiration to set up Surin Academy was actually from Sir Ken Robinson because he promoted creativity and that was something that I've, I found um, lacking in, in school sometimes and it's nobody's fault really, it's just the way the curriculum is set. So, um, and, and the importance of creativity, you know, for the future, especially uh, the next generation, they, they, don't, um, they don't need as much um, knowledge and understanding as when we were growing up and we had to look for books and sit in the library for hours, the children today can just, with a click of a button, learn so many things. So the times have changed and um, we feel that education uh, needs to evolve somehow. Nobody knows quite how that looks like, but at our place, um, we actually focus a lot on creativity and hands-on learning because we believe that Children learn the most if they experience something, and you remember it the most if you experience something rather than just reading and memorizing. So that's right. what we do. And we keep our numbers small because 
uh, we believe that um, that personal touch between um, uh, uh, having relationships and connections is not always possible in a huge classroom. Um, but if you have a smaller classroom, it's easier to get to know your students better. And because you get to know your students better, you are able to design the curriculum for them and personalize it for them better um, based on preferences and curiosity. Because if children are engaged, if they are interested, they are willing to learn. So we don't do much. We actually uh, set everything up for them and then they they take their learning into their own hands. So we're trying to build independent learners for the future. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I remember you were mentioning that uh, the, the number one uh, duty for teachers in Surin Academy is to know the children's inside out. So, so you yeah. got to really know your students, right? Yes, no excuses yeah. for that. <laughs> because um, we, the, the classes are very small and, you know, there's a lot of conversation. There's a lot of um, time in, in between as well to know uh, the children. And, and if you've got a small classroom as a teacher, you're able to identify the diverse learning styles. Yeah. You're able to see, you know, uh, which child works better with manipulatives. That means using, you know, like Lego blocks or the child who likes to sit quietly in a corner and not be disturbed by anybody and wants headphones on. <laughs> there are different types of learners, you see. So it's easier for the teacher to just manage if, you know, that was possible to and, have a small class. And not just knowing their different learning styles, right? It's also knowing them inside out to know what are their stress, um, their, their stress triggers, what's causing their behaviors, um, yeah. you know, and sometimes it is, what, what was that term? To be a stress detective, to yeah. try and work out what's happening at home, what's happening with them, why why are they not able to concentrate? It's not, it's not just- The behavior um, that you see, exactly. it's what's behind the behavior, what's exactly. the cause yeah. for it. So, it's everything, right? It's the style of learning. It's what's going on inside them and what's going on in their lives, what has changed in their lives. Right. Yeah. yeah, especially with children that are facing the pandemic right now yeah. because yeah. they, uh, we've never experienced that when we were growing up in school. So the amount of disruption in their lives right now, it's, it's a lot of stress, but they might not necessarily know how to explain uh, because they are children. Um, they just feel the stress and then they lash out in various ways. So um, parents uh, will feel stressed as well because they don't understand the change in behavior perhaps, or even um, uh, for teachers um, to not understand what could possibly be the, the, the issue. But if you have small and personalized classrooms, you're able to um, to, to actually paracounsel or just talk to them and figure out what, what's going on. What is it, what Children are so anxious, they're so worried um, we just started online school for a week, and we've uh, we've already put our antenna out to to find out if everybody's okay because it is stressful. It's stressful for the teachers, for the parents, for the for the children to learn this way because it's not our natural way of learning. Especially for our school, um, our kids are very used to to working together collaboratively, uh, but COVID is forcing us to be apart, and then. They are also used to doing um, a lot of uh, outdoor work. They're used to going out um, and co collaborating outside. You know, movement is restricted. So for our students and our school setup, um, it is super stressful. But fortunately, because this is the second time, um, they already know what to expect. And the, the, it's been a very smooth transition with minor tech hiccups here and there. Um, but the teachers then change the design again of delivering curriculum in such a way that we keep in mind um, what the children have access to at home or not. But because we we are able to to find out, you see, we 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 try to keep uh, close communication with the parents. We actually ask our parents to be co-teachers because it's impossible for us to get the child to the screen without the parent's support. Um, you know, so there's a very, there's a lot about connections right now because COVID is forcing us to be apart. Um, so the, the way we communicate, definitely technology is there to help, but how we use it is, is really um, up to different schools, I guess. Different schools will have different methods, yeah. And I guess uh, right now it's, it's a very important time where uh, 
teachers will need to really understand uh, the behavior of students, especially when we are uh, trying to engage with them remotely from far away. Uh, so at any click of a button, uh, when the engagement is low, uh, students would, would just shut off and there's really nothing much that we can do about it, right? Exactly. So, uh, yeah. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I would just like to zoom in in terms of hands-on learning because uh, I guess uh, it, it's something about what, what we will be discussing today, uh, which will be hands-on learning. So in traditional term, uh, it could be in terms of going to a science lab. So, so there's going to be a frog and they go hands-on and they bring out the scalpel and the knife, uh, cut it open and things like that. Uh, how, how would you really define a hands-on learning from, from your perspective? Uh, looking into as, as a student, I'm sure if you had that frog experiment as a kid, that was probably very exciting or... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or not. <laughs> no, I did um, the flower. Oh, did you? Yeah, but the, the flower is interesting too, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anything that you use your hands, so hands-on learning is when you try to, to learn with the experience. It's not necessarily building something, but half the time it really is um, about uh, how you learn by experiencing something. So the biology experiment um, is, is really a, a classic example of hands-on learning. But what we do at CERN Academy is we make sure that as 90% of our timetable or the things that we're teaching are hands-on because it's something that we we think about when we plan so the teachers actually have free reign um, they have the set curriculum and then they decide to be as creative as they want to allow room for that creativity so hands-on can mean um, using manipulatives for example maths you can count using for, for the primary school you can actually use you know coffee beans people use lego blocks uh, you could use i don't know i've seen teachers with mm. pasta sticks Pasta, the short pasta, being yeah. Italian, ice cream lollies. Ice cream lollies. So yeah. a lot of pebbles, pebbles, yeah, a lot. Yeah. So um, they use these manipulatives to help understand the concept that's being taught. Division, frac uh, fractions, fractions. I have one now that I remember. It, I have to mention um, during lockdown, one child was. Um, it was quite funny because he actually used glasses in the kitchen. It wasn't an instruction, it was just to do the fraction work, but he used the glasses and he wrote on his mother's kitchen top. It was quite funny because he wrote a quarter plus a quarter on the kitchen counter. <laughs> and he evidenced that he did his fractions and he sent it into the teacher. But the mother was like, I'm really glad he's learning, but uh, he has to wash my kitchen and wipe off everything from my kitchen top after that. Well, but yeah, it, he did in pencil. Though. He did in pencil, yeah. yes. But it was so cute to see that He's using his creative skills, you see, to, to do that. Um, and um, this is what we want to see in our kids, that they actually learn by doing things, by, by, by experiencing it. So it, we're, we're hardly in the classroom. We try to be outdoors as much as possible. Um, of course, with COVID, this has become super difficult. So um, even when we had our first half term back in physical school with all the restrictions, staying apart, one meter apart, um, the amount of hand washing, mm -hmm. the amount of, you know, so they, they quickly got used to that, actually. In the beginning, it was it was um, actually a directive from us to check on the mental well-being well -being of the children first, because for us, if the child is not calm, if the child is um, anxious, there's no point trying to to stuff academics down their throats because they will not be receptive. There's something that's bothering them, that's something that's worrying them. So if you can eliminate the worry, if you can make them you know, feel that they're safe in the learning environment, then you will see that they, they're very creative. They, they teach us adults, because we've forgotten a lot of our creativity as well, but they come up with the weirdest things. But that's what we want them to do, to use their reasoning, their thinking skills. We give them that space um, to do so. Not sure if I moved away from the question, but yes, <laughs> that's an example of hands-on learning. Yeah. Right. Okay. And and, and I guess uh, in a way we, we can go uh, very in detail in terms of hands-on learning. So so I guess uh, it it's uh, something that requires them to to be involved in that particular activity. Uh, hopefully they they can involve as much as many senses as possible: um, eyes, uh, auditory, kinesthetic. Uh, Hopefully, uh, they, they can have movement around uh, physical activities as well. 
for yes. us. Yes, well, suppose if you are completely immersed in your project, you know, um, let's say it was a rocket ship, right? Mm -hmm. You don't even realize that, well, the hope is that you don't really, there's a lot of learning that's so, it, that, pass, that, that you don't realize you're absorbing because you're so busy trying to get this rocket to go out into the sky, you don't realize that you're learning about physics, about math, about the, the you know, space, yeah. and even maybe a bit of history in there, you know? Definitely. Yeah. Um, we the, the children in primary who did that rocket um, mm -hmm. experiment as well, the things that, 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 that making it is the fun. So when you engage them, they are interested, they see it, and they see how it works then the curiosity will come in to say where's the physics in this and why does this happen why does this chemical you know or uh, react with this then the questions come and then the learning comes because they're interested but if they're not interested then it's very difficult because then you're just telling them to read and regurgitate yes <laughs> this is an engine yeah. <laughs> so imagine you know it's you know so we're talking as well um these are school children they're not in university yet they're not in college yet they still have to have a level of um, engagement because they're young and you know they, they grew up with entertainment they grew up uh, with television etc and they they they're used to being entertained but then if you go into a classroom where i have to sit for one hour and not move <laughs> you will you will get issues um you know fidgeting cannot sit still etc it's just boredom kicking in you see but if you give them a task and you give them a project to do and they learn by themselves they have to figure out how to work things themselves you don't have to spoon feed them that's when they really remember and they absorb what they're learning so we look at a lot of applied skills yeah not just the theory part that so for, for upper secondary so for secondary for example um, any opportunity to take them outside for geography because you know half of geography is about the world outside um, history as well take yeah. them to museums um, um, take them to interview people. I think two weeks ago they dug up the garden. Yeah, they did. Yes, <laughs> they to make did. a river. <laughs> there was a class I doing. I saw the photos. I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Mountains and rivers. And because you know COVID was starting to be on the rise, we were supposed to go to Templars Park to see the waterfalls. Right. But because <laughs> it was just becoming unsafe, so we, we see that's the creativity of the teacher. They quickly improvised and they made um, a river in the garden. <laughs> so they, the process of digging the river and building a mountain, like it's a mini, mini um, Yeah, now display. we're hoping that with the rain, there might be tadpoles and then <laughs> the whole little habitat comes yes. out, right? So they and did. Hopefully we can bury it and have our flowers back. <laughs> Wish we could show you pictures, but I think our FB page has some pictures yeah. of these things where they, they do all these creative stuff outside. So they did ask, can we dig a little bit of the garden, miss? Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> so they did it in the corner and it looks beautiful, but the learning process, because they also made boats um, with rafts and we're talking year four children. So they are eight, nine years old and they were seeing if the river they built, the, the raft could float down, you know, right. with the, the hose with the, the water, ah. you know. So um, everything they learned and they just stayed outdoors the whole day because that was their exit point and they stayed there and they had a picnic and they were recapping everything they learned about mountains and rivers because it was the end. And then after that, our children vote what to learn next because <laughs> mm -hmm. we're very student led. So they will take a vote. We will look at the curriculum and see all the different areas that um, they, they need to, you know, uh, touch base on. So they will take a class vote to say, OK, we're interested in this next uh, next half term. Mm -hmm. So that's what we will do. Um, mm -hmm. And that's their favorite topic, actually, the, the, the science and the you know, geography history that is their favorite topic. So when we're in physical school, it's so much easier because you can take them out, you can bring them uh, outdoors. And then before COVID, we could use a lot of um, manipulatives. That means we could use, we could share things, you know? Now with COVID, it's a bit tricky because you have to sanitize if you cannot share, you know? It's, it's become very restrictive, especially for our kids who are so used to learning that way. Um, but um, after about six weeks, they, they coped um, and now it's back to online again. So right. there, there's a lot of, as you can see, there's a lot of um, uh, right. change. Would you be able to uh, sort of walk us through on the transition phase uh, coming from oh, yeah. last, last week? So, so I guess all of the, the lessons are being planned uh, right until the few months to come. 
and COVID hits. So all the schools has to be closed down. Hey kids, uh, right now, everyone will have to uh, get instructions from teachers. So, so uh, walk us through the transition and, uh, and how does the, uh, the, the learning process actually take uh, forth uh, in adjusting to COVID? Well, fortunately, this second uh, round of uh, lockdown for us, the kids um, were ready for it. The first time was the hard, the hard one because it was new to everybody, including right. parents. So children are also instinctive creatures. If uh, a parent is stressed, they can feel your stress. You're not showing it, you're not saying it, but they can feel it. You know, the environment <laughs> is just a stressful environment. So um, it, it's just that the fact that uh, lockdown is against our nature to be free and to go out and to do things without permission, <laughs> it, it, it was difficult, right? But um, when they came back after, was it six months, four months, March, April, May, June, July, wow. It was almost six months uh, that we saw them in physical school. They were very happy to be back, of course. Even if they had to follow the SOP, they were just glad to be out of the house and be back. And, and even yeah. though we maintain social distancing and we practice herd immunity, they still could do things, you know, they could go out, they could still do things. And then now, uh, but we, we always have uh, conversations with them that, you know, COVID is there. Uh, we have a subject called global, global citizenship. So mm -hmm. it's to open their minds to know what's happening around them and not just in their lives. We want them to see the world and especially where they live, you know, for example, now Sabah is, is in, um, People. Yeah, it's in dire need of help, yeah. you know. So we make sure that our children know what the latest uh, is because they should be aware. They're, they're many adults. They can understand, you know. So when they, they understand, yeah. then they understand the need to stay at home. They, they're not complaining as much now as they were before, and they're just getting on with it, you know. So it is. it has been... The first week where so far the children have been very good. They under, they're very tech savvy. I was very surprised to see my year ones and year twos knowing how to navigate our systems. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of them have made a lot of progress from the last time that we were in lockdown. So you can see their tech skills improve. So in this time round, it wasn't as difficult to make them understand how to, how to navigate. And we, we chose a platform for primary that allows them to to do things by themselves without having to always ask their parents for help to upload, download, etc. cetera. Um, yeah. So we try to make them as independent. Yeah. Because yeah. it's really important this time around, right? Because the first time there was a coming together, everyone felt, okay, there's something going on. There was a general feeling of pulling together. And now this time around, there's a bit of a feeling of, oh gosh, you know, um, not again. So it, that that because of that sense is not there. We really felt the need that we have to keep the conversation going. Yes. Um, you know, you can you can ask a child, are you okay? Yeah. You know. Yeah. So they really have to talk about it and and really um, be able to have a place, a safe place, right, to be able to vent or or be among their friends and still feel connected and not feel suddenly like this. Um, prison cell has come down again on them and it's clanked and that's it you know they're still you know we're still there the connections yeah. are all still there yeah um, yes it's a pain but we're gonna have to just you know get through this together and and, yeah. and all of this because I think second time round, you need a lot more um, emotional support because it's again and you know They've just tasted freedom, right? Yeah, they just tasted freedom for yeah. a bit, and then. Yeah. But the 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 good thing is, we mentally prepared them that um, you know this can happen again. You, right. you tell them in advance. Well, uh, we have a lot of assemblies explaining what's going on, and then as it was escalating, we explained it's still uh, over there, but it could come here. So, uh, at any point, if it does rise, so they they if you prep children in advance, um, I mean, depending on the age group, because the little ones might not understand but at least they're mentally prepared to be flexible and i right. and i do use the word hybrid a lot with them lately <laughs> it sounds so cool but um we call it hybrid learning because i told them hybrid learning is you know we're in school one day and then the next day we're not in school but we're still connected you know so you use um words or, or make up uh, funky words to, to to explain to them the the situation we're in and look at it lightheartedly so that they don't feel that stress yeah. So this time round, they're a lot better, but it is early to tell because it's the beginning. So they still had 
you know, um, they're still okay, the energy is there. And then as uh, it prolongs, that's when it will be very difficult and tricky. But um, I, I have to also stress a little bit here that our online school is, uh, I'm not sure what other schools are doing, but our online school is very interactive. So that means we still maintain the connections even though we are using technology. Um, mm. We allow them to connect with each other through chat groups. Um, of course, there's like a student code of conduct before <laughs> to make sure that you're polite, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we set the rules and we say, you know, we want to use technology, but with technology, you must have rules also to explain to them what they can, what they cannot do to avoid issues. And then um, when they understand their code of conduct, then um, they, they know how to navigate the tools that we've given them. So um, we allow them to connect with each other. They can con uh, contact the teacher via chat at any time throughout the day because they have their little group chats in different subject areas. When we are live, as in video calls like this, in front of each other, it's not um, quiet where it's just the teacher talking. I, I've heard from um, some friend, child, uh, some of my friend's children that because their classes are large, unfortunately, the only way to control it, um, the lesson is that everybody has to be muted. So it's the same with us. There are times when the teacher says you have to mute, but we have a lot of times when they're talking back and forth, like a group call, like a one-to-one. -one. So say I'm calling out to one student and say, can you give me the answer? Then that student will unmute and then give the answer. I, I, I just found it, I thought that was the way everyone else was doing online learning, mm -hmm. but I think because I didn't realize because we're we just focused on our cohort and our school that it's more difficult in large schools because you have 25, 30, you can't allow them all to talk at the same time. Right. Um, so the interaction is less where they, they told me they're just listening to the teacher and then they go off and do their work. So there's less interaction, but we're okay to do that because again, we have small groups, yeah. so it's easier to manage. And um, there's a lot of, it's as if they're together in one virtual classroom, really, because they're talking, they're chatting, they're sharing their cats, they're sharing their pet dogs, they, they, you know, in between. Um, and we always give them that warm up time in the beginning of a lesson to, to get all that out before we start the serious stuff. So <laughs> allow them, how is your day? You know, what have you had for yeah. breakfast? So we still continue this. So the teachers will start off with warm up activities. So important, I think. So yeah. and sometimes it's the little things. Yes. It's the little things you that want to feel the, yeah. the, the, the the same warmth that you have in in the school playground, right? Or the mm. school just before the school bell rings when you talk about your pets or whatever. So yeah. that that yeah. So they they're connected that way, and yeah. I didn't realize that in other or schools. This way as well as that way. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In other, in other schools, I, I guess it's it's just not that way. But my advice, I think, when I heard that, it's, is if you're having a video call and, you know, it's because you have to do your, you have to follow your timetable and you have to connect with your students, but you're not able to have that kind of interactive connections. And if it's just a lecture, uh, it should just be a video that you send to them, to be honest, because it, what's the difference? I mean, this is what I, I'm... Personally, don't no offense, but personally, if it, I'm just coming online as a student to just hear uh, the teacher lecture, that teacher right. could have posted a YouTube video with the lecture, and I can see it later. You know, and that allows me to be flexible. I can repeat it if I didn't understand. You know, I don't have to catch it there and then. She's mm -hmm. she's recorded herself. So there, there, these are all tech tools. So it, it depends, and it depends on the cohort, depends on the type of school. Yeah. Our kids are also very uh, chatty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right, the word. Right. So, so they need the main, the main objective of uh, logging online. It's much more of the connection, building relationships rather than yeah. imparting the knowledge. Of, yes. Yes. yes, you can content download anywhere these days, yes. right? Yes. Right. But mm -hmm. The human touch or the, the, the warmth of relationships yeah. is, is really important. Yeah. And it's important for mental health too, right? Yeah. Which is also yeah. why this time round we've had to, um, I don't know what the word is, to sort of uh, make sure the parents are okay, put a dipstick into what the parents are doing. Because yeah. anxiety yeah. levels are really high. Yes. Um, you know, jobs, businesses. Babysitting. Yeah. So services. You know, what if both parents work? Yeah. And then the child is at home alone. So we 
have very uh, good rapport with parents to, yeah. to, to see how we can help uh, tweak the learning according to that's personalization again, uh, online personalization, because some children, for example, um, cannot stay online too long. They, they, right. There's one child that uh, we have who can actually uh, throw up if they were in front of the screen too long. So um, we, you know, the parents, because they've known us from the previous lockdown, they're immediately saying, look to the timetable. Um, uh, can we just do these, these, these classes online? And then the rest is offline. So we're flexible that way, you know? So we have to build that relationship with parents. And, you know, we just had one week in um, and I asked all the teachers to check in on the parents, not because we see the children every day, but to check in the parents to say, how are you doing with online school? Yeah. Is there anything we can do to help? Is, is it too much? Is it too little? Can the kids cope? Um, that kind of thing. So we have to remember it's a community. Yes. Um, we can't just deliver and just give everything to the children. You have to take into account parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in that same way, whoever's listening in has any thoughts or ideas or how we, you know, one, one can improve online learning. We're really mm. open to any any thoughts from anyone listening or any, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. because it's it's yeah. it's a very different type of learning, and it really de depends on your age group. Um, because the younger children are so enthusiastic to be online and see their teacher all the time, the teenagers are becoming a bit sluggish. It's probably because mm. they stay up. It's like an extended holiday for them. So it's about talking to the parents and saying it was a bit sleepy this morning. Um, is he is he sleeping on time? You know, or playing video games like summer holidays. So a little stress, stress yeah, detective, stress detective. We, we we find all that, you know, or yeah. they couldn't submit their work. So uh, is something else <laughs> bothering them? So the kids really have this safety net around them, but it requires um, really hand in hand work with parents. So we always thank our parents to say, you know. We, we have to do this together, we're in it together. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to do this together. And we actually ask our parents to be co-teachers in the sense mm -hmm. where please help us to help your child. So please make sure that they're awake, they've had their breakfast, that they have like a routine um, mm -hmm. every day and not lose that routine. Because once you lose that momentum, it's very difficult to get back in. So fortunately, mm -hmm. um, all our kids are okay so far, yeah. And routine is, is not just important just to get the school going, but also mm. it gives you a sense of um, normality, right, in this lockdown. And it also gives, routine is also comforting for some children as well to know exactly what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, from A to D, because we don't know what's going to happen with the pandemic. That's all out of our control and is in the unknown and it can cause a lot of anxiety. But with a routine, at least there's some kind of structure that can sort of help um yeah because then they'll say oh it's break time going to eat now you know together yeah see you in right. a bit you yeah. know so, yeah that, that, so, so Rene, so I, I would just like to find out right uh during the first uh pandemic when when the school the school got locked down the first time i guess everyone was transitioning on towards uh the uh remote learning concept so would you be able to uh walk us through in terms of when you first started right so so how did you actually uh, improve in terms of the uh, level of an engagement or effectiveness in terms of the remote learning programs that you do with uh, students so um, probably just give it a give us an example of uh, an activity that uh, when you conduct it, it might not actually uh, came about as what you expected it to be but uh, some improvements later what have you learned from it that and allows uh, the program to be much more engaging and much more fun for kids to to go through would you be able to uh, give some examples of that sure um because um first we have to clarify that our kids will always prefer being in physical school than online right, school right, right. i can vouch for that and so do um, our teachers because um i think online learning works really well for older students you right. know like college adults university because we have that discipline we're interested in what we're learning but to keep that engagement. So when we first had the lockdown and we had to set up online school, um, I lost like a hundred years of my life, literally. <laughs> it was that stressful because the first, it was about technology. It was about um, the, not just the children, it was the, the, the teachers as well. Um, the transition period was extremely stressful because it was the unknown. 
right? So this time round, we, we've experienced it, so we're better. And we were celebrating that as a school to say, look at that, you know, you, you, you know what to expect, you know how to navigate, etc. But the first time, Jay, was a, an absolute nightmare. We had um, only two days notice, was it two days? 48 yeah. hours, 48 hours to get ourselves sorted. So teachers were scrambling to get their textbooks, their, um, the, the parents were scrambling to get devices because not all the, you know, the households had a device for each um, child. And we're fortunate that um, our parents are able to afford a device for um, the children um, so that they can work with a laptop um, because I know some some children can only work with a phone, for example, or it's just there are too many. Like if you have two or three siblings in one house, you know, not every parent will buy one laptop for each child. So in the beginning, it was the setting up. We did tell the parents, please get a printer if you can, please, because there might be printing involved. You know, please get stock up with stationery uh, paper because it looks like we're going to be in for a long haul. So we were very anxious. We were very worried. Uh, the teachers were very worried. They were not um taking care of their own mental health because they were staying up really late to post work because it was double work for teachers it's actually double work because you plan your lesson and then you have to deliver it in such a way that the, you have to write it in such a way that the children can understand your instructions so it had to be simplified whereas in regular school you plan your lesson and then you go and you physically and verbally deliver it right so when you're posting work the instructions and everything beca became too too very nitty-gritty so the teachers were spending a lot of time um uh, and it was very stressful i've had i had teachers who were sick um they had to go into hospital some of them because them the workload um it was just something they were not used to right so uh, men, this time round, we actually got us. We we based on that experience, we actually managed to find a system that works as a team, so that everybody can switch off on the weekend. We actually push them to rest on the weekend because even oh. with online with online learning, they can stay up until two a.m. and they're communicating about lessons. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we don't realize it because we're at home all the time. The time just become Monday becomes Wednesday, Wednesday becomes Friday. So it was very stressful in the beginning. So this time around, because we expected it, we, we've gone through it, we survived it. Um, now it's the important things like make sure you rest, make sure you take care of yourself too, you know, checking in on the parents. But we had to do a lot of trial and error to get to where we are. And what we use for our school might not be able to be applied to others because every school will have their own methodology, you see. There's no one way for this because yeah. you have to look at your cohort. Um, you have to look at what they have access to, whether they all have Wi-Fi. In the beginning, some of my teachers didn't have fixed Wi-Fi, so they had to get on hotspots and then you couldn't go out. It was very strict back then where you could get caught by the police for, for going yeah. out for nothing. So they couldn't get internet providers, nothing. It was like, it was very bad. But yeah. this time around, I think we're more prepared. So it's easier. Uh, for those who are experiencing it for the first time, you know, out there, just to say that you know you will survive. You know? <laughs> we did, but in the beginning, it was so difficult. And the, I think the teachers, being naturally caring, you know, it's in, it naturally worried, in, in the sense like, how will my child, uh, will my student understand? Uh, what what happens if they don't do their work? You know, there was so much anxiety. And I literally have to say, can everybody chill? Because it's a pandemic. You know, we, we, we don't know what will happen if they dip in their studies. They will dip. It's not just us. It's the whole world, you know. So we can't expect life to be normal if we're going through a pandemic. So we actually, when, when the teachers realized that and we slowed down a bit, there was less stress. There was less panic because they were trying to keep up the pace like it was in physical school. But we had to address anxiety. We had to address someone who had no connection, someone whose internet was down, you know. So slow, we had to slow down and look at the key things. So online learning, actually we could go on and on about it, but, but online learning is actually looking at what exactly do they really need, you know, and take out the things that they don't need because you don't have um, enough contact time with your students. It's a different students. platform, so it's a different yes. style of learning and we can learn other stuff right that yes. you can't you can't do 
in the classroom, exactly. but you can do better. One, know, one, one to, example, home yeah. economics. Yeah. Home economics <laughs> is a big houses. one. <laughs> yes, we actually added it in the curriculum because it's they're at home. Yeah. So we have lessons where they learn how to cook, lessons where, and, and, and they, they have mindfulness. So there are times during the day that they have to, to, to follow a mindful video. They can, they, they had uh, uh, slotted times for, for example, art therapy. You know, when you do your coloring, it calms you down. And we actually pushed on a lot of this, making things, doing a lot of art, doing a lot of um, things that they had at home, uh, learning from home, because you have, we can't go out. So how, the teachers cleverly, creativity, creatively had to change, um, bearing in mind they're at home, what um, facilities do they have at home? So we, we added all these to, to atone for the academics because that's why our company is called Beyond Academics because it's not just about academics, it's about life skills too, isn't it? You have to have both. So now that they're at home, it's a perfect time to teach them life yes. skills. Yeah, really. get them off screen as well. Yes, you know? very important to get off screen yeah. as well. Yes. Right. So, so I guess in terms, hmm. okay. Is the sound back? What? Yeah, Tess. Yeah. So, oh. so let's. Uh, yeah. yeah. Could you could you hear the voice over echo. here? I just saw because you. There's a bit of yeah. echo. Um, not sure. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, uh, I guess speaking about hands-on learning in that way. Um, mm. Is there sort of like a specific time whereby uh, uh, on-screen time it's only allowed at a maximum amount of uh, hours, uh, and then you you sort of like mix it up with uh, physical or analog activities uh, when yeah. when you're conducting remote. We haven't learning? got there yet, but we eventually will have to if this prolongs because the current setup that we have right now, as of this week, is we thought we were going to be back in school mm. <laughs> on on Wednesday. So, but the last lockdown, which was very long, we actually t uh, changed the whole timetable to make sure there was a balance of both. This time round, because the lockdown was sudden, um, it wasn't really a lockdown, it was more like um, uh, controlled movement. And no, sorry, schools were closed suddenly. So, um, and we were told that we would be back in school in seven days time. So right. we did not change the timetable yet, but we are already alert that if, it prolongs, we will definitely have to, to look and find out on Tuesday. Right? Yes, which we will find out. When we yeah. find out, then we, we know what to do. So this is the thing though, Jay, it's ever evolving. Yes. Um, and it's, it's about flexibility, teaching our kids to be flexible, our parents to be flexible, our teachers to be flexible, yeah. because we're li living in uncertain times. We're literally rolling with the punches. Yes, right, it's right. difficult for everyone. Yeah. We understand, that, I mean, the parents who, who can't, um, be there next to their child to help the child because they're working they're, yes. or they're even working from home on you know online themselves they can't attend all the time so we we have uh, we build relationships with our parents to help us yeah. to to get to the child yeah. because ultimately it's in the child's best interest and we can tweak anything you know? yes and it's, we personalize yeah. yeah especially if my heart really goes out to like single working parents yeah. i mean I don't know how they can cope with this exactly. and online and, you know. And cooking so, and cleaning because yeah. everybody's at home. So they yeah. dirty the house the whole day, right? So there's more cleaning. So I always tell the teachers, get the kids involved. Ask them to, to learn how to mop, how to wash bathrooms, yeah. right, how right. To, to cook. Yes, we, we actually pulled in home economics. We have it in school too, um, but we also pulled that. And we even created another subject, which was called, what was it called again? <laughs> Uh, do, do, do it yourself, DIY wow. day, do it yourself day. This was when the lockdown was really long because it was just too much screen like every day, every day. And there was a lot of stress. So they had a day off screen where they could do a project and they have to present it the next day. But it was anything they wanted to do, anything at all. So this is right. what, um, what we do, but we are very flexible that way. So if a parent says, um, can we drop certain subjects and keep, what I say is yes, you can, because at, you have to keep the core, core subjects are uh, the ones that have to keep going, the math, the English, but any side subjects that the child cannot cope, it just has to be pushed aside for now. It depends on children. Some children 
flourish with online learning. I'm always talking about all the difficulties, but we have some children who are better online <laughs> than they are in physical school because they manage the distractions. We're talking about older children, uh, secondary yeah. children, where um, in school they're very distracted. They, you know, they don't do their work, they don't finish, but with online, it's like there's blinkers now on and they're focused and <laughs> they produce really good work. So it, it again, personalization again, where it depends who, um, whether, you know, the child has any learning difficulties, therefore they need to reduce their subject. So things like that we take into account based on the child. If the child can cope, is a typical child who can cope, then by all means, you know, yeah. Right. And, and I guess, uh, Rini and Sue, uh, from the Education Summit, you mentioned that uh, Surin Academy trains the teacher, a big advocate in training teachers uh, in terms of uh, the, the ability to, to teach better in, in that way. So uh, moving on towards COVID, right? What are the key things that uh, you, you had to really teach and, and retrain teachers in terms of different skills that are required uh, to, to, to work with students during this time? Oh, um, there was a lot in the first round. Now they're pros already. Um, so please, actually, with the, the transition this time, uh, kudos to all our parents and children and teachers. Um, but the the thing is, we, we, we are big on creativity. Our school's ethos is about creativity, is about the world around us, is about exploring the world around us. So you can imagine that um, for a school with that in as mm. a core, how a lockdown can really affect um, the, the entire school system. So we adapted um, and in the sense where the teachers, uh, we, we've always had a very strong team culture. So um, when we were back in physical school, we instead of um, teacher meetings, um, we have to have teacher meetings weekly, but if there is not a lot to go through, we actually slot in uh sharing sharing meetings so that means uh see my, my mind is like switching off already <laughs> sorry it means um sharing best yes yeah. sharing best practices that's right so every teacher will take a turn to share what they do well so it could be anything the art teacher could be showing the rest of the team how she taught art in a particular way which was fun or hands-on and another mm. teacher at science will show evidence of you know, they're sharing best practices. So same likewise in online school, you know, of course this week the meetings were nonstop because it was set up. It was systems set up, all the boring administrative, the SOP, you know, what time things are uploaded, all the nitty gritty. So now that that's over and the learning is going on and monitoring is etc., then we will also have sessions where we share and we, we're very connected with our group chats as well. So teachers have been sharing all week already of new math apps they found, um, you know, recipe books that they found because suddenly we're doing cooking. Did you know there were like 11, wait, 42 ways to cook eggs? <laughs> so they were sharing all these fun 42, things. Yeah. 42 yeah. weeks. Yes. So we were saying, OK, then let's teach them how to cook eggs because yeah, it's something that they should have at home, yeah. something simple. So we literally have children every week. Once a week, I think, dear parents, they're going to be <laughs> eating eggs once a week. So that's part of um, the syllabus. So we do have that sharing culture. Uh, we're very and if someone is stuck, like um, uh, I'm struggling with this particular student, we have conversations to, to check how the student is with other teachers and we will we laugh because there's one student who's extremely um, well behaved with one teacher but the complete opposite with somebody else and that's just how they are we're humans right we yeah. behave differently with different people so when we find out <laughs> because we have a strong team uh, network um, then that then we can work around the child so we know exactly so this teacher says yeah he will lose interest but I use this is this to maintain his interest so that teacher, oh, okay, I'll go and try that. So we have that. It's all about dialogue and connection, huh? Yes, right, and that's yeah. the thing. Jay, I, was, I think I had a conversation with you about this, that yes, yeah. technology connects us with people around the world, but there's another type of connections, the human connection is so important yeah. as well. Um, that, that, you know, sometimes text messages can cause havoc because the meaning is not um, sent across properly. So. I always tell teachers, if it's becoming 
uh, misunderstanding, please pick up the phone and call. We're so right. used to texting, right? Yeah. That we don't yeah. think to pick up the phone and call because as humans, we need to hear tone of voice. Yes. We need yeah. to see facial expressions. When you're texting, and same with online learning, when you are just delivering just via, you know, it's cold. Yes, it it's is cold. true. And then there's some little quirks that from a different generation we don't get from a younger generation. Like at one point there was something thing about full stops and how like people felt that it was rude to end the sentence with a full stop. This in our generation it's over our head, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I guess it's these kind of sensitivities that we don't know about. Yes, yes. So um, so when when and especially when it's a stressful period for everybody. Um, it's always best to maintain that connection, you know, with the students at home, uh, with parents, uh, yeah. with teachers, so there's no blow-ups. Um, because that happened a lot during lockdown, more than physical school. And the reason is just because everybody is stressed. Yeah. So as teachers, the workload doubles. Teachers out there, workload just doubles because that's how online learning works. And right. you become the port of call where you support your colleagues, you also support your students, you also have an added on to support your parents because it's emotional stress. Yeah. Yeah. So the teachers take that 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 um, burden. They 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 have to because ultimately um, the focus is the benefit of the child, right? So how can we help you? So is an added um, it's not written in our job description, but it's there. <laughs> that it's 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 there that we have to to do these things in order for teaching to happen. Yeah. So the hands-on learning is not just the students, right? It's the yes, teachers as it's, well. the, it's the parents as yeah. well. They have to go buy the ingredients, yeah. the eggs, and everything. You know, <laughs> so you right. have to have a working relationship. What are the forty-two ways of cooking an egg, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just by the way, uh, in terms of ba best practices, right? Would you be able to share us a, a glimpse, probably three best practices that you have found that wow, uh, this is amazing coming from teachers that they are able to really engage with them in, in certain activities that they have proposed. Would you be able to share one yeah, or two like, of them? Yeah. Or just verbally talking about it. Or oh, okay. Like um, examples, you mean? Yes. Yes. Oh, but, but, what kind of best practices? Like, um, um, for example, uh, science class okay. or art class that you just yeah. mentioned. Uh, yeah. What are uh, some of the activities okay. that really came out, out of your top of your mind, like a 42 <laughs> week to cook eggs? So that's something interesting. Uh, I, actually, so, yeah. I actually had this little video um, to show you, but you know, we're, we're struggling with technology here ourselves. See, see I'm such a dinosaur. Wait, there's on. one good one to show you Which about how a, ch a teacher did English. Because English is very dry. Which one was um, it? One hold second. On. Uh, no, it's a video, so hold on. At least some more hands on learning methods. English, sort this one. And maybe we can show this video just to show you one example of English to press the share screen. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Okay. The, the screen is not being shared uh, currently right now. Okay. Here we go. Repeat. Did you get it? No. Yeah. Okay. okay, we'll just show this example. Are you getting the right one? So, can you hear us, Jay? Yeah, can I, can, I can hear you. Uh, I, I'm looking at uh, a student uh, with a piece of paper and they're oh, trying to match yeah. up uh, newspapers, right? Yeah, so this is one example of hands-on. So, English is, is it's, my, it's the subject I teach. <laughs> so, we're always looking at ways to make text awesome. interesting to read. This is for the junior school. So one way is, I'm sure a lot of teachers know also, is to make them figure out and sort information instead of just giving it to them. So this is what I mean by hands-on. They, they, it's a newspaper article. So one, one warm-up that you can do is actually make them sort out the newspaper article instead of just printing a newspaper article and giving it to them. I didn't think you had the device. And then they have to create their own newspaper. Ah. Ah, but okay. it's a newspaper with back and printed at the back and in front, so you don't know <laughs> if it's in the back or in This is quite funny because a lot of parents don't buy newspapers anymore. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> True. So this is one example. And this had to be camera putting it. You know, um, That's really whoops. Sorry, I'm just going to, do I stop sharing? Yeah. 
Uh, you, you can you can leave it on. Uh, so the screen right now we're we're looking at uh, that the screen is off right now. Yeah. So oh, so it? what happened was that uh, it, it's sort of like a, a task or a project for the kids, right? So you you pre send them the 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 materials. Oh, that one was uh, yes. Hold on. Yes, we do. Uh, that is the trick, actually, Jay. Are you ah. seeing our screen now? By the way, what do you see? Uh, Wait. No, no. no. Uh, there's, there's no screen sharing, right? Oh okay. yeah. Okay. Let me just show you a few because it's easier to show. Uh, again, it's our ethos. <laughs> it's right, easier right. to show than tell. Well, we, do don't, we, yeah. we don't. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just going to show my file, and I don't know what is in here. But let's see what this picture is. Okay. Uh, just let me know when when you're ready to share, and uh, our our team over here can just bring it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're it's, sharing right now, and so yeah, this I'm is. I'm checking my phone. Okay. Well. We're ready to share. Well, it's right. just us. Okay. Okay. So so we're looking at uh, a picture of three kids and, and an adult. Uh, yes. If, yeah. Right. Out on, right. on the field, we, uh, preparing. Yeah. So uh, this is the rocket experiment, for example. Coca Cola and Mentos. I guess so. <laughs> I didn't do it. So this is a chicken wing one, but it's a bit small. Sorry. Can you see that one? Okay. So they were learning right. muscles and tendons. So okay. not your frog, but chicken wing. Not too. Right. Much. Okay. Not our two. And then groups. they were making. They were studying about um, space. So the teacher asked them to make. Asked them to make space lab. Right. Right. So they made it themselves and the collaborative work, as you can see. Right, I'm just going right. to go through. This is an example of hands-on division, where uh, you use coffee beans to help with dividing. So this is hands-on, Jay, where you use any any tools to make learning right. more fun. Instead of giving a worksheet with ten division sums for the junior school, give them mm -hmm. you know things to do with their hands so that they remember and they right. learn. So you could use this for addition. Yeah, interestingly, I, I saw an activity. Uh, so so they were trying to uh, let the entire classroom guess uh, in terms of a lollipop, right? So say, for example, a lollipop. So they, mm -hmm. they asked everyone to guess how many licks it, it takes <laughs> to, <laughs> to completely uh, dissolve. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to share that with teachers. But we, we look at all these things. We, 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 the, we, the thing is the teachers, it depends how creative the teacher is. So to be a teacher at Surin Academy, one of the, the JDs is you must be creative <laughs> with how you deliver your lessons. Okay. How, by, by the way, how crazy can an activity get uh, in oh, terms of, oh, of the... As long as the children and the uh, teacher is yeah. safe, they I can know. do anything. They dug a hole in our garden for the river. Wow. <laughs> they, right. oh, I, so, uh, but it's on our Facebook. But the river one is, is you know, this was another one. This was, oh, oh, this, was the this is yeah. the lockdown learning where, you know, right. the mother with the countertop saying, oh, my gosh, she's doing his fractions on my kitchen top. But it's so funny because he's decided to use glasses. Right. So that was so cute, I thought. And this is yeah. lockdown, right? So creativity right. happens during lockdown. But it's good that the, the kid is using normal water instead of like ketchup or, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, that'd be worse. <laughs> so these are like, we, we allow our kids to sit on the floor, sit outside, sit anywhere. This is an example. This was the raft they made for the river. I'm not sure if I took a photo of. Right, uh, right. This is like uh, mandala coloring art where it's to calm them down. So it's during mindfulness or during wow. art lessons. So mm -hmm. we push a lot of this for online school as well. Um, because they need to have sessions during the day to calm down. Um, mm. That was the rocket one again. Oh, this was pre-COVID times <laughs> where they did slip and slide. Yes, this was PE. Uh, oh, this was the soil experiment. So even the older kids, they're outside digging. You see, they're digging. There's another hole in the garden too. <laughs> okay. So, so there's... <laughs> you can see um, this is the sundial. Um, I mean, I just pulled a few that I had on my phone, Jay, but literally wow. their kids are always out and about. They're always making things. They're always, um, it's a very busy school. So right. even online, oh, is this mm -hmm. a video? I'll show you an example of a teacher uh, communicating with a class. Um, can you, I, I think I'll just play. Yeah, it's, a, it's a Beyonce. Okay. Comprehension uh, quiz with Neil Armstrong. Yeah. What did uh, Neil Armstrong make his own model plane as a young boy? Okay, a model plane is a small aeroplane. Okay, a toy plane. 
love. When he, as he was growing up, okay, he used to make toy planes, okay, small. How did he make the planes fly? What did he use to make his toy planes fly? What about you to make airplanes? Yeah, what did he use? Alex, what did he use? Very good. What did he use? Rubber beds, very so you can see the interaction during um, online school. Mm -hmm. right. And that's, that's, that's the thing. There's two way um, for our video calls. And right. in that class, there are, it's an inclusive class. So there are children with difficulties in there. And there's a parent also helping um, with the computer and the tech skills yeah. as well. So right. that's mm -hmm. one example. Oh, this is so small. I wish I could enlarge it. But this was also uh, very, I think you could, yeah, you, you could click that over there. I tried okay, to, very clear, but uh, they were learning the water cycle. So yeah. the teacher made them uh, demonstrate the water cycle by using Ziploc bags and drawing it and putting blue colored water inside. Okay. I think that's all I have right now, but there's so many. I didn't have time, sorry, to pick some nice ones to show. Right. Um, uh, I guess we can describe it over here. Uh, there, there are plenty of very uh, interesting activities, well, I, I we're, presume. We're over speaking, an hour already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but we're speaking of space, right? Uh, for for Edu Chat series, I, I guess uh, coming next month, we will be inviting two actual teachers that actually train as an astronaut. So, so oh, they went wow. to this uh, this program called Space Camp where, uh, you know, they, they experience the G-Force uh, uh, yes. equipment. Oh, okay. they even... love to them. Yes. Right. Can they come to our school? <laughs> See, that's what we do. Can we they pull in yeah. people like that to come to our school and do talks. We yeah, even we, get... We, we thought of, yeah, we, we thought of doing it because uh, there may be uh, a few of them. Uh, so one is coming from Brazil, uh, Philippines, and, and uh, the America, uh, USA. So, so what will happen is that they will share their experience on what they actually did for the training including the, the zero gravity uh, 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 experience and how they actually translate it into day-to-day -day, uh, STEM education in schools. So, so that's something to look out for as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll definitely look at, I think there's one class of doing space yeah. right now. Um, yeah, right. The Yen I think yeah. that's the topic right now. They were dressed up as astronauts, I saw. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. I send my little boy there. <laughs> so... <laughs> And this is lockdown learning. So yeah. as in they're at home and they uh, they had to come up with the costume by themselves. So right. we continue, you see, whatever we used to do in school, they, we do it at home as well. And we do send our parents um, a list of things to get before <laughs> because they, they, we, we're so used to, to learn uh, making our kids learn by making things. We actually have a list for parents that is sent that now you understand why our teachers work so hard, right? So right, they actually right. have to prepare a week ahead. These are the things that your child will need on the Monday, on the Tuesday, on the you know, if there's anything out of the ordinary, like right. eggs, <laughs> for right, example. Right. You know, right. they will have to go and get it. Yeah. Right. It's almost like preparing. It's like Gordon Ramsay preparing a, a, a cook recipe. Okay, yes. these are the ingredients that you need. Yes, because yeah. apparently upset if you say like go and get i don't know a spatula and they didn't have one for example right. you know okay. if you're gonna say paint this and paint that you have to tell the parents that they need their paint set or they need their a3 what sketchbook uh, sketch pads right. Right. so uh, if you give parents enough notice i mean it depends it varies from country to country depending how the lockdown is because we can still go out and get groceries and things so the parents if they have it on their grocery list they can go and get right, you know, right. things for the kids uh -huh. so there's a right. lot of systems um, online school is it's about a system that the team works together to, to set up and they work really hard and I'm very proud of them but um, it's not easy um, because it's a lot of pre preparation in advance and get right. and right. we're also very lucky that our parents are very supportive as well yeah it's not as seamless right. Yeah, all, all for the child's yeah. learning, see? So, and the, ch the children will actually say, mom, like my son, for example, you didn't get me lemon for some science experiment. I was like, I'm busy teaching myself. So I'm like, oops, I didn't read the list. Okay, you know, oh, so more okay. the neighbor. But the, yeah, the things like that, because they, they do it together online with the teacher, the experiment. They do it. Um, there's certain things we ask them to do offline. There's certain things that they do online. 
but mm -hmm. that that schedule and setting up a whole school from year one to IGCSE like that. Wow. Mm. <laughs> That's a lot. But but however, <laughs> ingredients that that are normally easily ob obtainable, nothing like like uh, liquid nothing nitrogen. Like you gotta get like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, we cannot go into the acid test and all that. Yeah. Until we until we get back in school. Yeah, yeah. Right. I guess uh, okay. So so over here right now, I guess the, there's a couple of questions over here from the comments from the audiences. So uh, let, let's uh, probably address some of their questions over here. Uh, I guess uh, from one of it over here from Marilyn Alson, right? Uh, so just want to talk about uh, safety. So when hands-on is good, practice of school is to make sure teachers or lab tech during experiments. Uh, so question is that how could it, we ensure that they are safe, especially the small kids when doing hands-on activities uh, in, in this online teaching? Oh, that's where our parents come in. So I think um, the first step would be to build rapport, rapport with the parents, a, relation, a working relationship. So if there are things like hot water, for example, we would put a note there, ask mom or ask parent. So we would tell the children as well in the in the when we design, when they plan, when I keep saying design, but it's actually in the planning, um, which areas of safety concern there might be, and usually it's a stove. So when they're cooking, they're using fire. So there, there would be a note to say, make sure mom is there or an adult is present. So right, if right. you work with the parent, um, then it's okay. So that's why we tell the parents in advance um, of the things, because we want to maintain that creativity, um, but we can't do it alone. So when there's a lot of, if there are knives involved, but apart from that, the, um, it depends on the age group um, because we have, we're very independent children. I think because we have been teaching them that way, they have been handling, they've had home economics as a subject, for example. So handling knives for them is, is easy. They've got their Pyrex knives and all that, you know, the non, non metal mm. ones and all that. So they they're, 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 they're mini chefs already. They're quite good with their motor skills and handling things already. So and it's also part of a whole personalization, right? Mm. right? We can tweak it according to how busy the parent is, the skills of the child. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be okay. We're going to do it. Everyone has to do it the same way. The same way. way yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. We yeah. can. We can. We can change it. Yes. Depending on the right. skill sets yeah. of each child. Yeah. So if their parents are working, they submit later when their parents are available and even if their parents are working usually the maid or a helper is at home to yeah. help them to do so as well so they know to go and call and disturb their parents we wouldn't <laughs> be asked doing you know yeah, yeah, yeah putting things that are beyond them either yes. there right, of course right. for science like we said just now there is no way parents can find acid or alkali tests and uh, you know test right. tubes and all that so the science teacher um, is being very creative, so she's tweaking the curriculum in such a way that when it comes to experiments, it's more um, with home available right. Uh, right. ingredients or equipment, shall I say. So that's just for scientific inquiry. But unfortunately, because everything else requires a lab, that's just theory for now, for the older right. school. Yeah, mm -hmm. when it, so videos, okay. tutorials, they see, you can find YouTube videos and, and let them watch the experiment for the older children um, mm. for now, because because of what they can or cannot get, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Uh, probably just one follow-up question from my side. Uh, how do you how do you provide the kind of instructions uh, to, to parents? I, I know uh, some teachers from the Philippines actually told me that they have to uh, create an entire manual because they engage with the parents on a weekly basis. So parents will have to go to the school to get the manual. And then that's sort of like the entire week's project, right? So uh, I, I'm not sure uh, with regards to uh, instructions for parents uh, in terms of activities. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand uh, it, they're on the right track. That's what we do too. But we do it online. Mm -hmm. um, we actually give the week ahead online with our school system. So we have a school communication system with parents. Right. Um, and parents right. can message anytime using that system. Uh, we, we use that system for a lot of things, especially portfolios where we share pictures of work to keep like a learning journey of the children. So the yeah. parents communicate with that app to the teacher. Yeah. And, and yeah. we send everything through that app. So yeah. But what they're doing is, is correct. I mean, if they yeah. don't have the app, they have to physically yeah. come and, 
and collect right. a weekend. Okay. So you can you can understand how 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 much of a workload teachers the, have the backstage, huh? <laughs> During yeah. a lockdown, it's double work because they have to think how to to send it home. Yeah. It's it's so hard. So right. we're hoping that this goes away soon. <laughs> but right. it's, do, it's do you do like a yeah, do you do, do like surprises for parents? It's like, okay, uh, uh, this envelope, do not open it before 20th of October. And you can uh, only open no. this envelope. Oh, or I, it's I, sort I of like a mystery for them. <laughs> no, we, we're too, yeah. too much ahead. Um, we can only plan a week ahead. At yeah. the moment, our team is yeah. doing a week ahead because we're, we're very into formative assessments. We check them along the way. If there's right. something right. that... Unless the parents doing. have something for us, like a, like a post-data check. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, we're thinking of hosting a virtual tea party for our parents because right. they're also... Mm -hmm needing you know to unwind yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. that kind of thing yeah right I, I i guess speaking on parents uh the, the question over here kind of uh uh seeps in quite well with the conversation so parents at times do get upset when teacher yeah. calls uh there, to connect with them. A, so um, yeah yeah we, we um it, it it is something that resonates for all teachers across the world because um as a parent um, they are used to sending, dropping their child off at school and then having that allocated time to do their own, um, you know, personal uh, needs. So the, because of that, it is difficult to, to, how do you call it, to, to get used to this new norm. So yeah. in the beginning, the, when we started online learning, there was a lot of uh, reporting back to the parents saying how important it is for them to work together to get about ultimately it's about the child's benefit so we you have to build that rapport with your parents and again because we're a small right. school it's yeah. easier for us but if you have 40 parents in a class it's literally very difficult and, yeah. I, and I think it also helps if um, you know if you're calling parents to to get straight to the point mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to take five minutes of your time mm -hmm. I just need to talk about a b and c um, if, it, if this is not a good time you know let's let's do it another time but I, I'm very conscious that you are busy and I just need five minutes yeah. you know just to set the boundary so it's clear and so the parents are not like you know um, yeah this is going to take a long time what is this about yeah you right. know get to the right. point you know, just yeah. make it brief yeah, yeah. so having a, a communication system yeah for a school helps because unfortunately you also have to be a diplomat these days huh yes uh we we have to understand mm. the stress levels yeah you know things could be going really difficult at work as well um and they if they get upset uh, we have to be understanding this is the first weekend and we've had some parents upset and it's part and parcel but uh, our yeah. teachers yeah. i think with all the training and experience we had with the first lockdown is to train um, to to know that it's nothing personal. Um, you have to step away from the situation and remember that you're you know it's nothing personal towards you. That the person is going through a lot of stress themselves. So you have to be understanding to the next level yeah. as a teacher. Yes, and every conversation just make it clear there is a beginning, there is an end. How long it's going to take? Yeah, you know, so that at least um, get get rid. Get rid of yeah. ah, my my tongue. Right. Get rid of a little bit of anxiety as to what is this about? What has my child done? Da, 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 da. How long is this going to take? You know, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So we, we right. usually um, it, it's a lot of communication. Yes. Um, and that's why I said uh, texting can be uh, tricky if it's right. becoming a difficult situation, a heated situation. Always pick up the phone and call, or try to have a video call. We we have video calls with our parents as well. If the, you know they're okay with that or we use a platform called whatsapp so we also can video call but usually we use our google platforms right. so yeah right but uh by the way I, I was just wanting to highlight as well uh during the past education summit we spoke to one of the teachers so uh they they sort of like had a, a parenting our group sorry one of our teachers uh, no, no. Uh, in oh, one okay. of our uh, previous education summit, one of the oh, okay. teachers was sharing. Uh, they actually have like sort of like a parenting uh, uh, group as well, and they do have uh, assessment for parents as well. So, say for example, if a parent actually did well in guiding their their kids right uh, in online classes, 
there's not only points for the kids, but encouragement points for the parents as well. I, I right? think, I don't know. Uh, our parents <laughs> might be a little bit judged. Yeah, yeah. Right, no, right. we try yeah. not to judge our parents. Yeah, but I right, can right. understand when you're trying yeah. always um, to get them. But deep down, we all wish we can train them, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, we and, and I guess... And I guess from the parenting supporting group, and uh, they, they do find out that, hey, some parents, uh, they really can't have the time to guide their, par their, their students. And what happens was that they sort of like buddy up. So say, for example, uh, kid A and child A and child B, uh, if uh, the parent B were to be unavailable, so child A and B were, uh, were to be guided by parent A. So parent A sort of like took responsibility to guide uh, the students, which the parents may have no time. So they sort oh, of like created a support network. system for that yeah, as well. That's a good network. I mean, you know, some of them are stay at home. Some yeah. of them are not. I With guess child protection issues in mind, but yes. Yeah. It depends yeah. on how that, that yeah. community is. So we like that, that is a tricky question also because different, uh, Schools will probably have, you know, everybody yeah. has different connections. Yeah. I mean, th different th different strokes for different people, and yeah. different things work for different schools. You know? Yeah, there isn't a one yeah. one yeah. answer. And maybe that 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 kind of uh, reward system works there, but I can't imagine our parents. Uh, yeah. Right. Being too kindly. Oh, right. oh, I got a gold star. Right. What are they? Kind of <laughs> <laughs> right, right. The points for the best egg uh, recipe or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, we we yeah. had to ask yeah. Uncle Roger that apparently. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, so I guess uh, another question from this. I, I guess this is coming from the STEM perspective. Uh, mm -hmm. So, problems faced by teachers are usually ideas about how to engage students, especially in science and mathematics. So, uh, how do you address this issue? I guess we 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 touched a little bit earlier on this. Uh, probably, if you would be able to uh, elaborate more on this. Definitely. So, again, it depends on how you're delivering the lesson, how you're planning it. Um, of course, if it's older students. Most of the time, it's a lot of video tutorials. I mean, we use video also for recipes, for example. But for maths, there are a lot of good apps there that like, like game type apps that you could use to make them engaged. Or you could ask them to use whatever, like if it's coins, go and get real coins and add up coins. So it's how you, how depending on what age group and what level, because the older uh, secondary um, cohort they are doing a lot of what we the online learning because they are able to watch videos you know and and they're okay with being i mean not all of them but most of them are okay with learning online because they they're used to navigate they can open a few tabs answer the phone i, I don't know when i see them they're, they they look like a business person you know who doing all this work on the different tabs open they can multitask because they're older so you can actually give them more challenging uh work to do which online they, they, their attention span is the, the difficult thing that we find with the secondary students is the discipline of getting up when they're at home because they tend to stay up late so that part we ask our parents to help them to give them that routine we must start school at the school starting hour because if they lapse, it's very difficult to get back in. Um, for maths, there's a lot of, like I said, when we showed the coffee beans, maybe they have rice at home, pasta, they can use that, you know, for mathematics, but um, it depends again what you are teaching and how old. We use a lot of hands-on for the younger school. Um, the older school is a lot of projects and a lot of video tutorials so that if they're stuck, they can watch it again and again. So the beauty about video tutorials for the older kids is if they don't understand how to do equations, they can repeat and repeat and repeat until it sinks in. Mm -hmm. So online is actually good for them, actually, you know, if you look at it that way. And it also helps for us, right, how to engage students because we know our students inside out. Yeah. If we have a boy that only cares about cars, mm -hmm. so that's a, that's that would be your inroad into science and mathematics, yeah. right? Design your, around cars. your speed or yeah, the car speed, speed velocity or things. velocity yeah. right, or right. the math is add all your toy cars at home. How yeah. many toy cars do you have? So it really depends. So you have to know your students first, I think, yeah. because there isn't one way to one size that fits all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's easier when we have direct knowledge of our kids' yeah. character. 
And so if we know the character, yeah. I've been using kids this whole and if you And if you, students. yeah, and if this, this child just loves the outdoors, then go outside and yeah. learn. If you know the child yeah. has a garden, yeah. go outside and do this yeah. kind of project or that kind Count of project. Count how many petals there are or, you yeah. know. Oh, right. Okay, go and study the, the flower, yeah. dissect a flower from yes. Dig your a garden. Dig your own parents' garden. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, things like that. So hope it helps. It's it's not easy if um, literally get up. They're on there. A lot of them are doing their work before the time. You know, they're still they still have that momentum right now. We hope to see it continue. Um, but we have that blend when you have to be doing work online, when you go off and do an experiment, do a project by yourself. Perimeter, for example, for right. math, go and measure your living room. I wouldn't just give them a worksheet on area and parameter. I'm not a math teacher, but we draw that that square thing, yeah. right? And then go and work <laughs> go it out. Go and find, you know, yeah. your dining table, what's the square yeah. area of your dining table? You know that they have a dining table at home, so you try to, to make your lessons interesting yeah. that way. That's yeah. the only way because yeah. we're restricted. It's it's locked down. That's why I said it's very hard to be hands-on. Uh during a lockdown. And for us, it, it's hard, but we still manage by keeping in mind uh, what they have access to at home. Yeah. Mm. Right. Okay. So, so I guess the key is really to understand your students inside out, not only the personality, but also their, their living environment, what are the resources that they have uh, to parents yeah. as well. It, it's very important if uh, yeah, hands whether on one activity. is at home, whether yeah. both are working, whether it's yeah. the, the, the nanny at yes. home, because we, we need to understand right? yeah. if there's misbehavior or if there's stress behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's a really important distinction to 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 break to make, right? right. Yes. If it's right. misbehavior and it's just hijinks, okay. But if it's a stress behavior, then we can't uh, we, won't pun we won't we wouldn't punish, but we can't try and um, come down on that behavior because there's something going on behind and we need to know what it is. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess so. We'll talk more on the uh, understanding of the behavior of students shortly in a while. Probably just let us just take while? one more question over there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, uh, one question over here from uh, Nazira Ahmed. So, okay. So, so we're talking more on the academic side and the examination side, right? So uh, that's uh, a different Right. So for older students, how do you prepare students uh, for the big exams like IGCSE since oh, students are allowed to drop well, in? We're very lucky in that way. Our our IGCSE students have no problem with <laughs> online learning because it, they do blended learning in school. Their IGCSE is online for them. So um, we have no issues. They already see that's the thing. From young, you're building independence. Um, and by the time they reach IGCSE, they know that IGCSE is for them. <laughs> it's not for anybody else. So our students, when they hit IGCSE age, they completely mature and they have that um, understanding that the learning is for them. There's no uh, need anymore to be as, um, to pull the engagement. It's more encouragement on how to do well. Uh, don't worry if you don't get you know, a high grade, you know, depending on what their target grades are. If your target is an A, you should get an A. If your target is a B, you should get a B and be proud of it. If your target is a C and, you know, that not everybody is an A student. Please, I have to I have to say that it's almost midnight. So I will <laughs> say it, you know, that is not every, not every child will be that A student. There are B students, there are C students, there are D students and there are E students. But at that age, um, they, we have to encourage them that, you know, that isn't all that, um, that the, the grades do not define them yes. at that age, it's you know, it's age. more to life than your grades. You yes. know, there, there are other ways to be creative, uh, to be entrepreneurial, for example. Yeah, especially businesses. with the way society is heading right now. Yes, we've had too yeah. many suicides with teenagers yeah. because we're pressuring mm -hmm. them too much. And, you know, when we were growing up and we did exams, we didn't have connected phones or, or Instagram or, you know, they're connected all the time in their minds. So again, you see we're, we're going towards well-being. So for us, um, <laughs> a well-being of a mental state of our children, very important um, because we want to uh, uh, to make sure that they, they are happy yes. generally inside. 
you know, because um, that this when they're happy inside, when they work towards IGCSE because they want it, they, they know that it's an exit point, you will see that motivation comes from them. Yeah. So our IG, IGCSE students are perfectly like, oh, online school again, because when <laughs> it's blended learning for them already. They're already so used to online school that for them, it, it's not yeah. a biggie. And also um, they have so much locus, right? That, yeah. that you know, it's not even about like, are you allowed to drop subjects or not allowed to drop yeah, subjects? Yeah, no, of course not. Cannot because you're doing IG. Yeah, and also Can because you are you are you are in control of your life. Yeah, the, the the dropping the dropping of subjects isn't really so you're not being forced. Exactly, right? they're not being forced, and um, yeah. they're doing it because they know that that is their exit point. You know, and we're also um, a blended learning school, so our kids do a lot of work. They do internship. They don't just do their IGCSEs. Um, there's a lot of life skills, so mm -hmm. that cooking stuff also happens for the IGCSE kids because they have to detach as well. But they know, sorry, they don't do cooking. They do um, skills, skills. So that means work skills. They things to prepare them for the workforce, uh, preparing CVs, resumes. They have a lot of conversations with their teachers about global issues, for example. Um, a very uh, different level. So you've got. Um, primary, you have lower primary, you have upper primary, lower secondary, and upper secondary. By the time they're in upper secondary, they are setting themselves and forming their minds to becoming adults. So uh, there is an expectation already at that age that they're mature enough to, to manage. And we are here as mentors and coaches. So for the online learning, for example, for lockdown, we make sure we check in every morning with them. So we check in every morning and every afternoon to check if they are completing their assignments and we have a monitoring system to see what they've been doing as well. So no issues for that right. uh, at I all. Guess, uh, Rini, you were mentioning about uh, the uh, academic uh, education as well as life skill mm -hmm. education. Uh, would you be able to uh, share in oh, terms yeah. of how Serene Academy balances between life skill and also uh, uh, academic uh, uh, achievements well, sorry, achievements. I, I just want to um, um, kind of have an idea of how long this is going to go for. Um, oh, is I this see. another question? Because we, we are also not, it's not very clear for us. Our expectations haven't been managed. Uh, I guess about, uh, let's go for another 10 minutes. Uh, I, I okay. guess there's only one or two more questions okay. uh, from the audience. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm um, sorry, what was the question again? Yeah, uh, uh, in terms of the balancing between uh, academic uh, education oh. in Surin Academy yeah. and uh, life skill education as well. Yes, we're very big on, on life skills because um, we believe that the future is very uncertain for the children. You can see now it's happening already with a pandemic. Um, so if you don't uh, teach children life skills, so coping skills, flexibility, collaborative skills, all these skills are important just as equally important as their academics because they can be very good um with their academics but they do not know how to navigate they do not know how to problem solve they don't know how to solve they, they get stressed easily because for example uh you know small things like i don't know it, they could go into a meltdown because it's not go happening the way it's supposed to happen so they're not flexible so life skills teaches you how to deal with real life. Now the school is a very, it, it, school is supposed to prepare you for real life, right? But there seems to be a disconnect because when the children go out to college or university or the working world, um, the skills are not necessarily taught of how to talk to strangers, yeah. different people. They're not, they're shy. They, they, they don't want to talk to somebody they don't know, <laughs> yeah. they, they're not confident enough to stand in front of strangers and do a presentation. So these children, um, that's why uh, the hands-on or the experiential learning happens more in the older school. They actually go out and they do internship. So our IGCC students are already doing internships where they work with, a, you know, depending on what they're interested in, they go and work. Like one child did a week in the SPCA because she was interested to be a vet. So where can she work with animals? She volunteered at the SPCA. She was in charge of putting medication down all the cats and dogs there. And she learned something through that experience that, you know, we always think of pets as calm, cute pets mm. that are from home, but the SPCA pets um, are all pets that have been traumatized. So they're very 
difficult and um, she called savage a little bit wild because I don't think she wants to be a vet anymore. Nah, she didn't want to be a vet anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so she said, hmm, maybe not. So this is important for our older students where they experience things um, in the workplace because then the, it's gearing towards workforce already. At Key Stage 4, so we're talking uh, year 10, year 11, but we start as early as year 7 where we start making them open minded a bit, like talking about the real world, the outside world, because school is supposed to prepare you for, for that. But the real world doesn't have a timetable to tell you wake up at 7.30 because you have English. The real world doesn't tell you to mm. eat at 10 o'clock because there is recess or break time. The real world is full of uncertainty. There's no certainty. Pandemic is teaching us all this. So how do we teach them how to cope with problems? how to cope with, um, you know, how to be flexible if things don't go your way. Um, what can you do? What support systems do you have? So, you know, how to build connections, how to collaborate. Maybe they don't like somebody, but they have to do a group work or project with that somebody, you know, and it's deliberate design by the teacher who, cho who chooses who they work with because they learn that way to work with difficult people. Because when you go to the workforce, you can't pick and choose your colleagues you have to know how to deal with difficult colleagues as well, right? So these skills start from school. Yeah, and that's so, why that's one of the beauty of our school being inclusive, mm. right? You have all kinds yes. of characters, characters. And, 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 and everyone has to rub along together, you know? Yes, so yeah. that they're so used to um, accepting others for who they are. Mm. Our school is very big on empathy along with life skills, so empathetic, uh, uh, you know, with technology, there is um, a gap with uh, skills for empathy. It's, it's something that it's hard to teach. You have to feel and experience it. So helping the community. So for now, you know, Sabah, we were talking about frontliners. Do you know what frontliners do? The older, the older students can reason to say the sacrifices. So the conversations that we're having to, to, to make them thinkers. But the younger school be like, oh no, why would I go and risk my life? They don't have that maturity yet to understand um, you know, the risk, the sacrifice, they don't have it. But if you don't have those conversations, how are you preparing them for real life, right? So we're big on that. That's our big thing, character education, <laughs> very big. <laughs> it's like our number, number one, character education. Oh, we, we work with the Birmingham University as well with that, yeah. they have a program there. Um, to build character as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, I guess uh, one or two more questions over here before we call it day. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I, I guess Nurul Ain over here is a teacher for young children. Uh, I'm assuming it's a, a primary school and below. Uh, need engaging activities for young children. Uh, so any sharings uh, from oh, from perspective? Young children. As in, like little kids, like primary, like yeah, them yeah. using manipulatives are the best. Yeah. So, coffee beans, pasta. I keep saying that because I'm not a primary teacher. Sorry. Yeah. Um, mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can find. Resources are all over the house. I found toilet. acorns. Yes. <laughs> See, they're acorns. Yes. <laughs> See, we can use anything. Um, there's um your your toilet paper. The the oh yeah the, the rolls the rolls the empty milk cartons um you know, straws, stones, pebbles. Um. Little, little children, I find that it's good to neural to start with warm up games. Yeah. Um, scavenger hunt is my favorite because they move during online learning. So you should try scavenger hunt if you have uh, oh, sorry. video activities, not materials, yeah, sorry. activities. So they say you're learn you're teaching colors, for example, in mm. French. <laughs> or Mandarin or Malay and you actually make them stand up and say go find something red go find and then they run off the computer and they come back and they show you who's the fastest one it becomes a game um, but it makes them move as well and if you start off your uh, your lesson that way and they're a little bit tired and exhausted from all that running then you have their focus um, to do the, the rest of your lesson or you know whatever else um, and the little children and again this is like the like the one before, follow their interests. Mm. If they are interested in snails, just go go from there, right? This is a snail, the life cycle of a snail, draw spirals, um, what else could look like snails, what else are spirals, what are the, you know, um, what's the difference between a snail and a slug, you know, you just find your way and just, 
you know, um, see what comes from their from from being child led and from their interests. Yeah, go in, go in, you know, in, yeah. and for art instead of go go outside and paint the sky, yeah. you know, because we're, we're in lockdown, right? So yeah. you have to think up of imaginative ways that what they can do at home, yeah. basically, or if they can go outside and and find leaves, they can do leaf printing. Yes. Um, you know, so, so that's hands on because you're going around looking for things and you're doing work with your hands. But it starts as what they are interested in for yeah. young children, right? Yeah, also, and of course, with online school, when it comes to reading, and you know, it's a lot of videos to storytelling online, that kind of thing. Uh, if it's boring, always just you, you can find a video on YouTube that is somebody else, somebody who's funny, somebody's dressed up, or uh, oh, they love dressing up young children, neural. So if you want to have a dress up day, you can ask them to dress up as an astronaut or make a costume. Yeah. They, they love doing that, have a tea party, online tea party, <laughs> where they come dressed up, you know, for your online class. The, uh, it's a lot of fun with the younger school. The older school is a different ball game. <laughs> the, older, the older kids need different kind of motivation. They, they need more conversation, more connection, more talking. That kind of thing. The little ones love doing things. Yeah. Hope that answers your question. Okay. So, Nurul, if you if you could let, let us know how old are the students and probably what subjects, so that that will probably give us a more of a context in terms of uh, the the suggestions. Uh, thank you, Nurul. And and I guess uh, one last question of the day. I guess uh, this uh, issue has been brought up uh, again and again by parents uh, in, in terms of yes. Uh, in terms of uh, parents are pleading, yeah, I guess for, for their case, uh, is that parents pleading not to carry out online lessons, uh, oh, reason no. being children they're tend weak. to switch into apps like yeah. games. Uh, Especially if they're not at home. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's, it is hard. It is tough if the parents are not there as your support system at home. We had a parent who had this issue the last lockdown and we managed to establish a printing out kind so the the work was printed from by the parent so they were not allowed to be online they had mm. to just submit work because there was nobody at home or they were with their grandparents i can't mm. remember so there was nobody to monitor their their navigation online some parents put uh, parental control locks but i don't know how how that works and if it works so they can only access things like youtube kids or whatever they, they click on, the parent gets told in their email that there are things like that, but you have to be quite tech savvy to know how to how to set those systems up. Um, and I guess if some parents don't have the time, then you know the whole the, the program of study maybe can be shared and then they work offline, but you lose that connection with the child, mm -hmm. right? You can't you can't assess properly, you can't check understanding. It's really tough um, unless you know you follow the idea of, which is um, like the Philippines were doing where they yeah, sent packages the every every week, but that's because they didn't have um, access online. If your parents have access but choose not to, then then it's a choice. It's very tough. We, we can't do much. We can only do so much. Um, and I know as teachers, everyone just wants to reach out to everybody and don't want to leave any student behind. It's innate in all teachers that they want the best for their students. But if there's no collaboration from home, then it's a one-way street, I'm yeah. afraid, especially for online learning. Um, there's nothing much you can do because we're not there physically. They're not with us in a classroom yeah. and they're at home. Um, and if the parents can't help, it's really tough. Um, so the most is send work to be printed. So we had that for a while and then that, that those students were then allowed to try out again online and then if they were good and then they were allowed to be back online, things like that. So it's, it's up to the parent because they know their kids how they are at home as well. You know, children are different in school and when they're at home, they behave very differently in different places. <laughs> That's how kids are. We all survive this. Yeah. Hope okay. that answers. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um Okay, so uh, I guess from Nurul, uh, she just wants to say thank you for, for all of the ideas. Uh, You're most welcome, Nurul. Hope it helps. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, I guess uh, let's. Uh, I guess that's the last question of the day. Uh, so okay. I guess for, for closing thoughts, right? In terms of 
uh, ideas uh, and moving forward for teachers which are currently still on lockdown? Uh, any suggestions for them on, on how do they actually implement this uh, online uh, remote learning uh, in terms of hands-on learning for students? Uh, any project resources based. that, yeah, project-based learning. Are there any the resources that you can have, suggest to them? Yeah, yeah you have to, it's hard when uh, we can only um, share based on our context, which is a smaller school. But if it's a bigger yeah. school, it will be tough. Um, the only the, uh, the the if you know your if you know your cohort, uh, if you know their likes and their interests, try to use that yes. to to keep them engaged. Yeah. Um, uh, but ultimately, I think don't stress. Go and go and have a long bath. And don't <laughs> yes. worry too much. Always tell. You know, oh. you've you've all teachers. I would say have done an amazing job, and you know, and the the worry level is just rising. So. Yeah, there's, there's burnout, and we have to yeah. remember that teachers are parents too. So while they're teaching other children, they yeah. have their own kids online. So yeah. it's like a knock-on effect. So really, teachers are champions right now. Yeah. Um, so kudos, you know, well done to everyone for whatever you can do. Um, it's it is a pandemic. You know, will there be regression? Will there be everybody's so worried? And even if there is, don't worry. You know, children are such um, adaptable yeah. creatures. They're not like us. So, so if they miss a whole year yeah. of school, they will catch up. Trust, trust me. Yeah, you know, don't beat yourself over shoulds. Yeah, I should have done this. Should I should or, do this. I should, you know, regrets. do this better. Yeah, you know, you, I, I can almost guarantee you, just by having that kind of stress in yourself, you are already doing a great job. Yeah. So don't teach them to, to, you know, use, use the fact that they're yeah. in lockdown to appreciate um, the things that they have, um, you know, and and to, to to do things around at home, to help their parents out more, yeah. if they want to help their parents with the dishes, for example, uh, instill these kind of things that they can do aside from their academics as well um, to, to keep them engaged. You know, children, when they're young, they consider housework fun. <laughs> Mopping the floor is fun. So utilize that, you know, as, as, as a teacher and then yeah. parents. Um, our yeah, parents yeah. are always busy um, looking, taking photos of their kids doing work they've never done before, like cleaning their room or... <laughs> yes. Yeah, so you have to make do with the situation. And then read them Tom Sawyer and know they've been duped. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the situation, it's a pandemic, you know, and these, these teenagers, I mean, I have one child right now doing her IGCSEs in the middle of a, you know, a, a lockdown, like so exams were cancelled and then on again. So their disruption, they will be known as the, you know, 2020. Uh, all these children, when they grow up, they will all remember and say, do you remember that time, yeah. you know, when we, we survived that, we made it They'll through. They'll be the most resilient uh, yes. generation. They will be. Yeah. They'll be the toughest um, children in the future because they went through all this uncertainty yeah. and you know and if we can support them mentally you know support them uh, talk to them uh, reduce anxiety that's the most important thing right now um, uh, you, you it, life is not normal anymore it's a new norm so it, it, that we can't use the same methods that we used before it's just the fact that we have to keep trying to find ways to get to our students and the important thing is to be as creative as possible so no limits to your creativity go wild you know um you know that 42 ways to cook an egg that was hilarious but we as a team we we said why not and then you know then they're happy doing it so it wasn't part of the curriculum before we added it in just because they're at home and they can do it so different activities offline we also think about um they can do uh, half an hour of mindfulness, listen to a YouTube video that you choose, and then have just Zen in the room where they're listening to calming music. So a uh, mental well-being is very important right now for everybody, from teacher to parent to, to students. And so, to UJ. Yeah, and to UJ. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, you know, right. so there's academics and then there's mental well-being. So you have to, to balance both. Yeah, it's a it's it's a must, and it's a pandemic. Nobody knows what will happen. Um, you know, it's there's so much disruption that we can't plan that it will be perfect. So if we accept that nothing can go as perfectly as we wanted it, we go with the flow, we adapt, we learn. I think that's and and model it to your students. Tell them about your difficulties because that's what we do. Our kids know when we've had a hard day at school or at home. 
we, we show them we're human. We show them that, you know, online school is tough. They say, Miss, why do you have eye bags? Because I spend <laughs> 12 o'clock, 2 a.m. uploading your work and marking it online, you know, so they, they know um, and we, we share. And these will be the pandemic kids who will remember all this in the future. Hopefully, that will be a better right. future for them. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, uh, basically. Yeah. I, I guess one last thing is that uh, I, I like I like what uh, Sue was mentioning during education summit was that uh, uh, you mentioned something very important, which is uh, for teachers to gauge themselves uh, before going into class to check their own emotional level. Are they okay uh, in terms of their mood? Uh, what's bothering them even before going into class? And I think that that is a very important point that Sue has uh, pointed out to teachers. Uh, to be able to check and regulate their their own mood and to be really honest with themselves how they're feeling Correct. at the moment right now right okay. and 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 if uh, yeah, something definitely. were to persist yeah to do something about it to to make it better definitely yeah, you must also understand as, yeah. as teachers um uh, children don't learn from somebody they don't like <laughs> because they are very i mean they, they're able to pick up um when you're being incongruent, right? Yes. When if you're you, being biased or you're being when you are your levels of anxiety are here, but you're smiling and telling them to calm down or relax or don't worry. And with that kind of um, incongruency, they will feel the you know they will start feeling the stresses and all of this. I mean, I'm not saying for you know um, dismiss all your anxiety or whatever. Just come back to it. Or, or be or try as much as possible to to leave it out right yeah basically when you all, te all teachers are actors and actresses when they go in they're delivering a show right yeah. in front of the children you might have you know something that went on at home that you know was a rough day for you but just because it was a rough day for you doesn't mean the children have to suffer from your disconnect yes you know so at that moment you have to put on the show it's just like acting Show is on, show is off, you can go and have a cry. Yeah. Um, and depending on the maturity of the but, children, yes. and you can all, also share yeah. depending on what. I'm I'll not, say, I have a migraine today, guys. Yeah. Please don't yes. start. And exactly. then they were like, okay, miss. We, we also, <laughs> it's not about being in, inauthentic too. You also have to be authentic, right? Yeah. But at the same time, you are the calm person in the room and calm begets calm. So, and you have to be authentically calm and make sure that yeah. um, you're not um, pretending, you know? So that's it's, why that's what I meant by leaving some things out. It's not not to 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 have a mask or or, or to yeah. be fake. Yeah, it's not, it's not, not about, that. It's not about it's being not fake. That it's about being maintaining calm. Yeah. A student, you know, we have uh, we're an inclusive setup. We have students with needs. If they're having a meltdown, if you're also having a meltdown, it's not going to help when two people. Where's the camera? Two people <laughs> are having fire and fire. It's just not going to help. One has to be. You know, if the child is upset. The, the the adult has to be the bigger person and calm down and understand it's not personal it's not you know it's same with parents it's not personal it's about uh something that's bothering them but that level of calmness that a teacher needs to reach is 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 yeah. tough it's not easy we're human too we can also have good days and bad days yeah. so you know when when it's a bad day we'll say sorry you know we we make mistakes too <laughs> Um, we're teaching them to be human. They're so surrounded by technology and robots and all that, um, AI in the future. So how do we teach them to be connected with their feelings? Uh, we show them as well that we are not robots. Yes. Yeah. Things like Authenticity. that. Authenticity. Yeah. Yes. Right. I guess it's, it's very interesting that all of the, most of the education chat, uh, it really ends up with, uh, and we, we always end up uh, with mental well-being of teachers because uh, I guess in a way, parents, teachers and students, uh, the, the anxiety level, the stress level. Okay. Yeah. Have you yeah. told me you had it's all about well-being, is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, we're, we're, we're in a very stressful yeah. year uh, for everybody. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess... It's, yeah, time yeah. to you know. Right. Thanks, guess, uh, thanks for having us on your show. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, thank uh, you so much for joining in as well. I guess uh, having a good night's sleep and an early rest is very important for mental well-being as well. So yes. yeah, there you go. Yes. yes, yes. We tell our teachers okay, so, as well. Don't yeah. go to sleep early. <laughs> don't you know? Don't start in a bad habit of staying up late. 
look who's talking. But um, you know, you have to have that <laughs> and remind them as well that they can only do so much. You can only do so much. Yeah. Right. Thank you for, okay. for having I guess, uh, and yeah. And I hope we were able right. to be informative. Yeah. If. <laughs> okay. Right. So do we log off okay. now or do we wait for music? <laughs> I don't know. What's the protocol? Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, so I guess with that, uh, thank you again, Sue and Rini, uh, for joining in the EduChat series. Uh, and for those of you, we can uh, uh, wish bon voyage to both of them. Sweet dreams. Uh, and uh, take care. Bye. Uh hope to see you soon in, in, as well. All in, uh, I think no. I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Good night. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. All right. So that was uh, Sue and Rini from uh, the Surin Academy. I guess uh, if you want to check out more about uh, Surin Academy uh, and, and all of their activities, uh, they are they're available on their Facebook page. Uh, we will be linking down in the comment below as well, as well as they are... Uh, uh, website which is uh, surinacademy.com so uh, there, there's uh, if you were to check out their uh, website uh, there is a number of blogs that they actually posted uh, so very interesting uh, informations over there so do definitely check out on their website as well as their Facebook page as well all right so for those of you who are tuning in uh, for, for the last two hours, thank you so much for joining in and thank you so much for all of the questions. Uh, thank you so much for teachers that are joining in on the conversation as well. So a little bit of sneak preview for uh, next week's uh, EduChat series. We will be having an educator from uh, Switzerland, right? So uh, if those of you who are interested in what uh, uh, the country of Switzerland, how their COVID situation is right now, uh, how they are schools are, are coping with uh, in, in terms of uh, public schools and private schools as well. Please do tune in on our next uh, week's uh, Edu Chat series, right? And also uh, for those of uh, the teachers who are originating from uh, Philippines, I was told that uh, the schools has just resumed for the past one month. So I guess uh, there are a lot of different conversations and feedbacks from teachers, which I have been connecting with. So in preparation uh, towards that, um, we are preparing a very interesting EduChat series for uh, the 7th of November. So if you were to look at the poster over here, uh, we will actually be inviting uh, educators from a different level of education. So uh, like what you see over here, we have teachers representing coming from the K26 primary school, the K212 education, junior and senior high school, as well as the tertiary education as well. So we will have uh, uh, teacher Ian uh, Oranio, uh, Mariam Lepasana, Muhammad Ali Rember, and Dr. Genesis Kamarista so all of them, they will be sharing on their thoughts as well as their experiences during the education uh, process during COVID, right? So it's definitely a very interesting discussion. Hopefully we are able to shed some light in terms of challenges and most importantly, what are the solutions and what can teachers do during this time uh, in helping students, parents and teachers uh, so that our education uh, it's in a continuation so that it's not stopped and hopefully quali qualified and um, quality education are still being delivered to students over there as well. So please do not uh, uh, miss out on the uh, education chat series for the next two weeks to come, right? So uh, as always, for those of you who have just joined us, this is the Education Summit uh, platform. So whereby we are always being discussing about education uh, with uh, excellent and experienced educators. Uh, so if you like uh, what you are hearing so far, uh, please do um, give us a like and comment uh, as well. We really appreciate your feedbacks in terms of uh, what can be done better in the program as well as the platform by itself as well. Right. So I guess with that, I would like to wish all of you a very good night, a very good uh, Saturday and hopefully that all of you are well rested, uh, especially the teachers out there, in hopes that uh, we are able to deliver more quality education in the future as well. So uh, Jay Wong here signing off uh, on a Saturday evening. Uh, take care, everyone, and I will see you next week. Take care.